Welcome back to Crawford Clark Close Up and our Pixar season of reviews. Over the last month on the channel, we've been counting down to the release of this summer's The Incredibles 2 by going back over the Pixar back catalogue of films and reviewing all 19 before their 20th gets its release. And now we've made it. It's time to revisit the Parr family, Pixar's family of superheroes, for the sequel 14 years in the making. It's The Incredibles 2. Having proven his brilliance in his Pixar directorial debut The Incredibles in 2004, director Brad Bird has since followed up that huge success with the delightful Ratatouille for the studio in 2007 and was enlisted by megastar Tom Cruise himself to put his action experience to the test, resulting in the pulse-pounding Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol in 2011. The Incredibles was and remains a Pixar fan favourite, and the time was right to find out what's been happening with the Parr family since their adventures in the first film and their climactic showdown with Syndrome. UK audiences would begrudgingly have to wait a whole month after our overseas cousins to see the return of The Incredibles, but was it worth the wait? Opening in the same time zone as the first film's finale, The Incredibles 2 kicks off with Mum and Dad, Mr Incredible and Elastigirl donning their costumes and masks to try and defeat the Underminer, the villain introduced in the final moments of the first film and once again brought to life by Pixar stalwart John Ratzenberger. Where the first film took some time to introduce the central characters and the side ones and interweave the action sequences with the quieter, reflective character building moments, the sequel launches us straight into the action and it's easy to see from the get-go how animation has advanced in the intervening years since 2004. The camaraderie between the family is still there, with siblings Violet and Dash squabbling over who has to stay behind to look after baby Jack-Jack whilst mum and dad do their thing and save the world. What we're quick to learn is that there's even more at stake here. After an impressive opening sequence launching straight into the action, we have some downtime as the Pars are homeless, finding themselves living in a motel whilst contemplating over who stays at home with the kids and who goes out to look for work until we're introduced to Winston Dever, superhero devotee, and his sister Evelyn, who offer Elastigirl, Mr Incredible, and returning family friend Frozone the chance to reclaim their right as superheroes to live in a world where it's no longer illegal to be one. Impressed by the idea, the family take up the offer and are invited to stay in one of Dever's many homes, but the roles have reversed. Where Helen, Elastigirl, was the stay-at-home mother while her husband had the adventure in the first film, now it's Elastigirl who is recruited into her first mission for Dever. This is Pixar going girl power on us, and it actually works. The sequence in which Elastigirl speedily tries to rescue a passenger train from derailing is a thrilling sequence that showcases the character's power and determination. Amidst all of Elastigirl's power and freedom, being out in the field, we constantly cut back to Bob Parr as the stay-at-home father trying to tackle the housework and ensure his three children are safe. It's a shame, therefore, that the sprightly Dash isn't given half as much good dialogue or entertaining things to do this time around. Much more focus is given to Violet, who is having boyfriend trouble, who becomes the woman of the house while her mother is away, and is there to reassure her dad that he's doing a good job. The movie's stealing character this time around, however, has to be Baby Jack-Jack. We had little glimpses of his superhero powers at the end of the first film, but here they come into play in full force. The character is engaging and provides much of the comic relief in the film. So far, so good. The characters we grew to love in the first film have returned, portrayed brilliantly by Holly Hunter, Craig T. Nelson and Samuel L. Jackson, who all have plenty to do as the three central superheroes, but we're also given more colourful superheroes to admire this time around as well. Back Again is one of the original film's standout side characters Edna Mode, often referred to in this instalment as simply E, with the film's director Brad Bird clearly relishing resurrecting this popular, amusing character who's given all the best dialogue. Her interaction with Jack-Jack in learning of his superhero powers is a highlight in the film. Now we come to some of the film's weaker aspects. Michael Giacchino provided a wonderful score for the first film, as well as a number of great scores for Pixar over the years, but his score for The Incredibles 2 seems a little safe. It's very repetitive, and it's a shame, because it could have been more dynamic to showcase how much more action there is in this film compared to its predecessor. 
the villain angle is also more disappointing and throwaway this time around. As we enter the film's second act, we're introduced to the main antagonist, the Screen Slaver, who intends to wipe out the superheroes, and it's easy to see from early on who the real villain actually is. If you think of one of the new character names in this film, and read it back over to yourself, you'll know exactly who the chief antagonist of the film is, and for Pixar to make it that easy is a shame. Aside from this, the film has great pace, like its predecessor, and it's as long as the first film, making it one of Pixar's lengthiest. What Brad Bird and the Pixar crew have given audiences is a colourful, investing two hours with a great mix of characters and terrific action set pieces, with great heart at the centre of it all. With The Incredibles, Pixar don't really need to tug at audiences' heartstrings, and they haven't here either, instead choosing to ramp up the action from its predecessor and keep audiences on the edge of their seats. The Crawford Clark close-up standout scene is the aforementioned Elastigirl catching up with the passenger train and stopping it from derailing. It's an early action sequence in the film, but one of its most effective. The Incredibles 2 is essentially fun, engaging fare that's certainly on par, see what we did there, with its predecessor, and in terms of action, it exceeds expectations. It's not up there with Pixar's great greatest, but it's a strong contender. Overall, we rate The Incredibles 2... Alrighty then. So, have you had the chance to see Pixar's 20th animated feature yet? What do you think of our thoughts on the film? Tell us what you thought of Pixar's long-awaited sequel in the comments below, and if you like this review, please subscribe to the channel. You can find Crawford Clark Close Up on Facebook and Twitter, and you can also drop us an email with your suggestions for future reviews. Crawford Clark Close Up at gmail.com as we're now up to date with our reviews of all 20 of Pixar's feature films, stay tuned as we'll be bringing you three more videos in our Pixar season. We'll be ranking our greatest Pixar moments and ranking all 20 Pixar feature films. After, that is, we've ranked Pixar's short films, which is coming in the next video. Thanks for watching and until next time, that's a wrap.